The day one keynote of Microsoft's 2024 Ignite conference had a clear message. This is a company that is on fire with its AI innovation, creating real value for businesses. And just as we got used to being in the age of the co-pilot, we have now jumped in with both feet into the age of the agent. Let's dig into some of those things Microsoft announced for Copilot and Agentic AI, those items we now have more information on, and what this might mean for this technology and the impact it will have on you and your business. But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on helping smaller businesses get the best from AI. Check out the links below if you're interested in learning more about me or my services. Many of us have now been hands-on with Microsoft 365 Copilot for more than a year, and in that time, there has been a staggering number of improvements. However, it's clear that Copilot feature changes in the Microsoft 365 apps are now old news. These updates got absolutely no airtime in the official Ignite blog post, and only a few minutes in the day one keynote. But there are still some exciting things we should consider. First, screen understanding in Teams is a big step forward for Copilot's help in meetings. I would argue that Copilot in Teams is, in many ways, its most successful implementation. But one of its few weaknesses has been that when analyzing meetings, Copilot hasn't been watching or listening. It's just been relying on the transcript. But now, with screen understanding, whatever is shared to screen will be part of Copilot's knowledge of the meeting. This new feature will be coming in 2025. Another arguably less important update directly improves on one of the criticisms I had when I recently looked at the new narrative builder in PowerPoint. We will now be able to use files as grounding for narrative builder, meaning that we can use that new dedicated agentic experience to build presentations. That's slide decks for those of you under 40. Not just from Copilot's knowledge, but from our organizational files. This will be live beginning January 2025. Alongside this, we'll see new translation capabilities come into PowerPoint from December and support for images from organizational asset libraries in quarter one of next year. We're seeing file and web grounding come into Excel. We're seeing help with organizing one-on-ones or focus time in Outlook, along with Copilot's help in building agendas for meetings coming between December and Q1 of 25. Though I do have to admit, I was left scratching my head a little at this one, as the demo available through the related blog post shows just drafting a text agenda for a Teams meeting request in Outlook. However, over in Teams, we now have a completely different agenda experience based in Loop. Microsoft really needs to decide how agendas should be managed for meetings across its suite. Most exciting for me, is it looks like a feature I've been complaining about being missing is finally making its way to Copilot. Across BizChat, Word, and PowerPoint, Copilot will be able to draw grounding information from OneNote pages and provide citations linking back to them. Frankly, if that was all they announced at Ignite, I'd be pretty happy. The place where there was a focus on Microsoft 365 Copilot was Copilot Pages. And Microsoft continues to push this as the first digital asset of the AI age, or some other wonderful marketing slogan. And it is great that we'll be able to have Copilot build charts or mermaid diagrams or related things and push them to pages. However, how about pushing them to PowerPoint or OneNote? I'm still thoroughly unconvinced by this focus on Copilot pages, but let me know if you think I'm wrong. Drop a comment below telling me how you're using them. Before we move on to agents, if this overview is valuable to you, please do give it a like to help it get in front of more interested people. Also, if you want to see more like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Where the focus really now lays with Copilot is with agents, or at least with new agentic capabilities. And I do agree that this focus makes sense, as in many scenarios, the ultimate value of Copilot isn't going to be just about what its out-of-the-box features are, but how it can integrate into and support the unique processes or data you rely upon in your organization. However, just as while we waited for Microsoft 365 Copilot to launch last year, Microsoft got itself distracted and created a hundred Copilots, some with amazing capabilities, and others with more meager usefulness, 
I fear the same is becoming true for agents, or at least agentic capabilities, that are suddenly springing up everywhere. Copilot Actions is really the first floor of this new agentic agenda. Currently in private preview, this looks like it will be a simple capability to AIify the existing workflows capability we have in Teams that essentially puts a super simple UI wrapper over the capabilities of Power Automate for Microsoft 365. How this is different from that is clearly the sprinkling of generative AI to allow something more natural language driven, but foundationally Microsoft continues to push these super simple solutions to get end users who have no interest in learning a more powerful tool interested in process automation. And I'm not sure any of them really get that much traction. Again, if your experience is different, tell me in the comments. More exciting, I think, is the addition of task-specific agents in apps where Copilot is available. These are designed to offer a specific set of services related to an app or a task that otherwise might be assigned as an important but either low value or niche type of work to a human. One example is the facilitator agent in Teams that will help you manage a meeting and take notes. Or there was a great example of an interpreter agent that can help with multilingual meetings. Some are now coming to public preview, others will arrive later, and I'm sure as soon as I see any of these capabilities show up in my tenants, I'll dive into them more here. On top of this, Microsoft is promising a range of third-party agents from vendors like Adobe or ServiceNow, However, Microsoft has been promising broad third-party support of Copilot's extensibility infrastructure since its release in November 2023. And while the range of apps that are Copilot supported in the integrated apps catalog has grown, I'm excited to see more third-party agents coming, but I'm not holding my breath that every Teams app is going to be quickly Copilot enabled. In my opinion, the real power of agents is going to be tailored extension of Copilot's capabilities at a capability level that significantly exceeds Copilot agents, but is well within the grasps of a moderately skilled low-code maker rather than needing custom pro-code development. I think this is the area where what Microsoft has been doing recently is the most exciting and certainly the most fitting extensibility path for the small and medium-sized businesses I generally work with in my consulting practice. On this front, from day one's keynote at least, or the now available blog posts, I didn't feel we got very much that moved along this story. We know that agents are getting autonomous capabilities, this was already announced. In fact, I could already build a custom agent in Copilot Studio with an external trigger. What's missing right now, and I'm not sure we have a timeline on, is this cross-pollination we have seen between these sorts of autonomous actions and the easy interface we have in BizChat for declarative agents. Right now, these sets of capabilities are very much distinct. You can't just build an agent in SharePoint and call it in BizChat. You can't just trigger a custom agent and have it pop up a request for user input there either. In my view, this user-side integration opens up a lot of possibilities, and I really want to learn when we're going to see it. Hopefully, there will be more information in breakout sessions this week. What is clear is that we will be getting new tools to work with a wider range of data and to refine how it's used in Copilot Studio. We'll be able to bring across data directly from Azure AI Search as a source in Copilot Studio, as well as use multimodal inputs and outputs there too. This is a serious step forward, and I'm gonna be excited to see the types of things that we can build using these new capabilities. With so much going on in the world of productivity AI, working out how to get the best from this technology can be time consuming and confusing. I help businesses like yours with their Copilot adoption journey, from advisory help on the selection of the right AI tools, to technical advice with their implementation, to leadership and end user training, and support with extending its capabilities across your operations with new tools like agents. Whether you are just thinking about which AI solution to choose, or if you're already in the midst of using Copilot, I will help you to maximize your return on investment from your AI technology. Check out the links down below and get in touch to start working with me. There were lots of other, rather more nerdy, but also exciting updates announced. Azure AI Studio seems to be becoming Azure AI Foundry. A good name change, really, as having Azure AI Studio and Copilot Studio 
could be quite confusing. But it's also adding new capabilities around agents and testing, some of which, when I dig into them, might further answer some of the questions I've posed in this video. Watch this space for updates. One of the more interesting demos was involving a Gentic AI with voice to be able to jump from a chat to voice and back again, while putting together custom information for the customer. I honestly look at demos like this and wonder whether too much focus is on showing off something wowsy rather than just getting the foundations right. I'm not saying that it's not in Copilot's future, and I may be wrong and it may be able to be completely realised end to end in Copilot's now, or at least in AI's now. But I do worry that for many businesses these types of displays set entirely the wrong expectations. In my view, managing the journey to the wonders of the AI age is very much about expectation management. Also, it seems that Microsoft has, to some extent at least, taken on board some of the security criticisms leveled against its Copilot products. I'll put a link below to my Copilot hacked video from the summer if you need a refresher on that topic. The Secure Future initiative was heavily highlighted in Satya's keynote, as security and governance were key issues in a lot of the information released. This is great, as right now there is too little visibility and accountability for the why and what of Copilot and other AI tools. As we speed ahead, there must be more focus on safety, and I think this is one of the core topics that will ultimately make the adoption of AI sustainable, as we see more and more AI implementations be stung by issues resulting from not having enough focus on responsible use. Overall, I do think Microsoft is on fire with this new agentic path. You just have to spend an afternoon playing with these tools to understand the benefits they can bring. But there is a risk of that fire getting out of control if they allow a rapid and uncontrolled creep of agents without real and deep planning on how the experience of using them should be streamlined. Sure, this experience has a lot to do with your internal adoption and governance, but at basic level, we need a roadmap for experience management. What do you think? Were you excited by this first round of Ignite announcements? Let me know in the comments. And check back here soon, as I'm sure I'll be looking at some of these items in a lot more depth, and potentially answering some of the questions I've posed in this video. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.